Hi, in this episode, we're bringing you Michelle Lambert. She was at the 2014 conference with the National Local Government Customer Service Network and gave a great speech. We've picked out some real highlights for you to have a look at. Enjoy. <laughs> right then, now I'm actually not going to stand tied to this thing because I can't stand getting me to sit there for that long is enough. Mind you, I've been tweeting all morning and at some time today they may show you the Twitter stream which is all the comments about the presentations and stuff today. Anyway, um, so... Oh, okay, um, founder of the Knowledge Management Roundtable Network in Victoria and I ran that for eight years and over the last um, six months I've stepped back and wanted to focus more on the change and the social media. 30 years experience in line and change management and it, for me it's always been about why is common sense so uncommon? Why is it that this stuff that just seems to make sense can't seem to get done? So what we're going to talk about is the state of change today. There's lots of stuff floating around. Well, I got a PhD student to do some research for me and we're going to pull some stats out and share them with you, hopefully. And so there's lots of data on the slides. The reason being that you then have this information, which I presume will be shared with the participants, um, to take back and draw on, okay? We're going to talk a little bit about our role in change because there's been that thread going through about how do I deal with difficult people, etc., etc., and often their difficulties because my job's changed or whatever. And there's a whole range of, a whole raft of reasons for those sorts of things. And we're going to explore some data and some examples. So I've got some case study organisations, some that have learnt from their mistakes eventually, and some that haven't. And then perhaps a bit of reflection if we've got time on what we can do differently. Okay, as a minimum, the purpose of change management is to mitigate the risks of projects, including costing, scheduling and performance, speed of adoption, adopting new work practices as BAU, or compliance, as some people put it, and a positive impact on staff and client. Now, that's a minimum, okay? So if it screws people around, it doesn't achieve the minimum, yeah? As a maximum, it should be looking at ownership and identifying the real issues and working to create the solution. So moving from compliance to culture. How can we shift it where people don't think they've got to do it because they have to do it? They move to a place of knowing that it's the right thing to do. Key influencers are engaged in assisting with effective communication to minimise resistance in their peers. Now sometimes picking the most resistant people engaging them, helping them to understand and turning them around, they can be your biggest advocates. Other people in the room use this? Yes, yeah, a few, quite a few nods around. And it does, it makes a real difference. Providing your workforce with a voice where they are listened to and are able to contribute in a tangible way. Now in the case study story that I'm gonna be sharing with you, we've actually got examples of an organisation who've done that. And building trust and resilience. We talked this morning about a lot of attributes for customer service. Resilience is key. So, you know, it's also key in a change management role. And let's face it, put your hand up in this room if your role doesn't involve managing change in your workplace. Come on, anybody here who doesn't have to manage change? Okay, so... Common project success factors. The effect of an organisational change management program on a project's return on investment. Because we know our managers love to hear about the budget and the ROI and all the rest of it. So this is some data from McKinsey. Where excellent change management programs were part of an, an initiative, there was 143 up to 143% return on investment. Where there was poor or no change management, 35% of the investment. <coughs> Clearly, continuing to deploy projects with inadequate change management is not a productive way to do business. Be it public, private sector, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't make sense. If the return on investment is understood, 
the change is informed and considered, it should only go ahead when the cost of it outweighs, oh sorry, when the benefit outweighs the cost incurred. So it shouldn't be change for the sake of change. If someone has a solution looking for a problem and thinks this is really cool and we should do this, then, I'm sorry, radar comes up, what's going on here? So, in our call centre environment, the systems weren't enough. Engaging the people and understanding the real problems was what they found was critical. They used a whole range of tools. They used things like um, the good old TQM tools. They used knowledge management practice. They used change management principles. They used a couple of lean tools. They used all sorts of different things. Whatever they needed, it was a smorgasbord. There is no one answer. They used whatever they could find to engage their people and help them understand it. And, and one example was a piece of paper that would enter the system and it took nine days to get through the system. And so they got the guys from the call centre to track what was happening, where were the touch points. <laughs> they found, so they had influencers involved in this, they found that in those nine days there was 90 seconds where that piece of paper was touched and yet it took nine days to get through. So those sort of things went through the place like wildfire. People were going, oh my God, that's not good enough. We need to do something better. So they were creating their own energy around the need to do this better. It wasn't about resistance. It was about, this is ridiculous. So they involved them to find the right solution. Now, the solution was a technology solution in the end, of course, but they were involved in developing what that would look like and how that would meet their needs. They did create champions and influencers, and I was talking to someone about this last night, and, and champion, influencer, whatever you want to call it, super user, although, you know, our conversation about the user, the title, the other people that have users as their clients are drug dealers. So what's that about? But anyway. <laughs> so, but um, they created their own environment, they created their own way. They created avatars on the internet. They created energy and, and reached to people. And this was, you know, social media was, was part of the picture, but it was a lot about face-to-face. -face. It was a lot about everything. So if we look at information change. This is a really bad slide. Basically, what it shows you, you've got your P5 across the top. If any one is missing, something's going to go wrong. So if, just because it's really bad for you to read, I apologise. Um, if purpose is missing, missing, a lack of clear purpose and joining of the docs for people means an unfocused approach that will not deliver real benefit to the business, only change for its own sake. That's when your purpose is missing. Lack of people, considering the people, clarity is the reason for the change, on the reason for the change and having robust systems and processes is only 20% of the answer. Without engagement and addressing the people factors, the likelihood of success is 30% at best. Um, pathway, no strategy without a clear pathway designed to sponsor and deliver change effectively. Initiatives do not gain support across the organisation and inevitably lose momentum and do not deliver. Without planning, systems and processes, both formal and informal, reflecting the necessary ability to adapt based on the needs of change progress will be blocked and the initiative will fail to succeed. And without embedding it, no attention to the need for the culture to build resilience, support itself and communicate effectively before, during and after the change Failure by cultural resistance is often the outcome. So that's where they put their head down, ignore it, and it will go away. Yeah? It's a bit like parenting. If you're not consistent, the kids know how to get around it. And obviously we don't forget that. We take that back into the workplace. 
Thanks for watching our broadcast on the National Local Government Customer Service Network channel. I hope you got lots of hints and tips and tricks that you can use at your council. The case studies were great, the information's been great. I hope you're enjoying it and don't forget to visit our website. See you next time.